Chris Harris and I'm from armytutors.com and in this video we're going to look at shapes of molecules. Now this is the second part um, of three different videos that look at shapes of molecules. Um, this video will look at molecules with lone pairs of electrons and um, there is another video which is part one which looks at molecules without any lone pairs of electrons um, and it is advised that if you don't know um, much about the, um, the shapes of molecules then you need to look at that video first so if you just click on the link just below and you'll be able to have a look at that one there so this video like I say assumes that you know um, basic ideas of um, bond angles and how to draw them so we're going to look at these ones where they uh, some molecules that actually have a lone pair of electrons um, and we're going to follow a very simple method to try and help us to work it out um, to help work out the actual shape of the molecule and the angle that that molecule has as well. And we've got this um, basic theory here where we have, um, we call it electron repulsion theory. And um, we've got um, some rules here for when we have lone pairs. So when we have a standard molecule um, and there's no lone pairs in there, then all of the bonds will repel equally. Um, but if we have a molecule with a lone pair in there, um, lone pairs actually repel um, bond pairs a lot more than a bond pair and a bond pair that's next to each other. And because they repel them a little bit more, the shapes of molecules with lone pairs actually change as well. And that's exactly what we're going to look at here. So I'm going to go through um, three examples to show you. Um, there is an exception one which I'll look at at the end. Um, and we're going to follow our um, rules, our checklist, which was seen in the first video um, to do with bond shape. Uh, and I've actually written down our reference shapes again from the first video. Um, these are um, shapes that have no lone pairs in them, but we need to use these to actually work out the shapes of these. So we're going to start with this one first. Now, this is a molecule with one lone pair in it. Um, and this is an example, which is ammonia. Now, ammonia um, has, is obviously made up of nitrogen and hydrogen. Um, and we're going to, the first thing we need to do is draw a dot cross diagram. Now, I've drawn this on here. So I've done nitrogen which has five electrons in its outer shell and um, three of them are involved in bonding. So we're going to write our sum here. So the number of bond pairs that we have, that's what the BP stands for, um, is we've got three bond pairs. So I'm going to put that there. Um, but you can see that actually because nitrogen has five electrons and three of them are involved in bonding, um, there's a pair of electrons that's left over. So the number of lone pairs we have is one. Now, that's what we've just done here for this checklist. We've drawn our dot cross, and we've worked out how many bond pairs and lone pairs. We then need to total them up, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So, three and one is obviously makes four. So, we've got a total of four uh, bond pairs and lone pairs in this molecule. Now, from here, once we've done that, we then need to work out the reference shape. So, the shape that we can actually start with first, then we can alter it according to how many lone pairs we've got. So if we look, our total is four. So this means that our molecule is actually based on a tetrahedral, which is over here. So if you imagine the shape of your molecule, uh, and your molecule would look something a little bit like this, where you have uh, four different bonds that will come from here, and that's the tetrahedral shape, as you can see. And each bond angle between that is 109.5, and you can see uh, on here, that, that's what I've put on there. It's 109.5 degrees between each of these bonds. Now, ammonia has only three bonds. So one of the bonds, and it's this top one here, um, that is actually um, not exist. It doesn't exist with ammonia. And so what we have left is effectively um, three bonds. But what we have on the top is a lone pair of electrons. Now, lone pairs repel bond pairs more than if it was a bond pair, bond pair. So if we have a lone pair on the top, this actually squashes the rest of these three closer together, as you can see, like that. So it forms this shape. So if this was the nitrogen atom, and you had your hydrogens on the end, these three bonds are now a little bit closer to each other than what they were if that was a bond on the top. So, and how much closer they are is actually, they are two and a half degrees closer than what they were before. So we're going to draw our bond angle, and you can see that we have nitrogen in the middle. Uh, we have uh, a dotted line that shows a hydrogen going away. We have a wedge that shows a hydrogen that's coming towards you. And we have a solid line 
that shows that our uh, hydrogen is in our plane of vision. And we put our two lone pairs on our nitrogen. Now this was, if it was tetrahedral, it would have been 109.5. Um, but because we've got one lone pair, we actually reduce that value by two and a half degrees. Um, and that actually leaves us with a angle between the bond pairs of 107 degrees. And just to illustrate this as a 3D model, so if I bring this closer, uh, you can see that we have um, one that's coming towards you. And you can see this one here. So this one's coming towards you. This one is in the plane of vision, and we have another one that's just sticking out at the back, and this one's actually moving away. So this is why we've drawn it in this way. One coming towards you, one moving away, and one in the plane of vision. So that has a new name that doesn't appear on here, and we call this um, pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal. So again, the trigonal bit comes from the fact that we have three bonds, uh, but we call this pyramidal because it looks like a pyramid. So anything with three bond pairs, one lone pair, uh, would have this name, uh, and this would be the bond angle for it, which is 107. Now, if we come on to the next one, so this time we've got a molecule with um, two lone pairs. In this case, it's just standard water. So if in the exam they asked you to work out the bond angle and name the shape of um, water, this is what you would do. You would have uh, draw your dot cross diagram, which is what we've done, and from that we've worked out that we have two bond pairs and two lone pairs. That's on there. And how many bond pairs and lone pairs do we have? So we're going to write them down. So we have two bond pairs and we have two lone pairs. We're then going to total them up, which gives us a total of four. Um, we look at the shape or reference shape that we need to start with, and four again means tetrahedral, so this is similar to what we started with here, because we've got a total of four. Um, so what we can do is we'll bring our model back in. So you can see that we started off with a tetrahedral shape. It might look something like, something like that. And you can see that we have our, if that was a little bit straighter, so you can see that we've got our molecule there, you can see that was what we start with, that's our reference molecule, because we said we had four. But this time, we're going to remove, or, well, this molecule doesn't actually have um, two of the bonds. Two of them are actually lone pairs. So we'll remove that one, uh, and we'll take that one away. And what you're left with is two lone pairs that might sit on the top either side, but these two will squash a little bit closer together because of the repulsion of the lone pairs. And this time, because we have two lone pairs, there's a lot of repulsion between the lone pairs here and these bonds here. And that's because these lone pairs are actually closer to these bonds than if it was just a normal bond coming from it. So the bond angle between here is, is vastly reduced, as you can see. And because we've got two bond pairs, and sorry, because we've got two lone pairs, we now, for every lone pair, we reduce our bond angle by two and a half degrees. So this would have been, I'll put the oxygen there, this would have been tetrahedral, which would have been 109.5. I'm just going to draw these two that are there. So there's the lone pairs. Now these bond angles would have been 109.5 if it were tetrahedral, but we take five degrees off that. And so what that leaves us with is a bond angle of 104.5 degrees. And the name of this one is called uh, Bent or also known as non-linear. So you can call it uh, either of them, and that's effectively what we've got. But you can see our bond angle has actually changed because we've got two known pairs. Now the last one that I'd like to go through um, is this one here, and this is a slight exception. Um, remember when I said that actually for every lone pair that you have, you remove two and a half degrees from your bond angle. This one is a little bit different, um, and I'll explain why. Um, you've got this one, xenon tetrafluoride. Um, it's a noble gas, and but it can actually bond with things as well. So you can see here that we've got four bond pairs, which is um, which is on there. So we've got four bond pairs: one, two, three, four. And um, there are two or four electrons left that aren't involved in bonding. They pair up and give us a total lone pair of two. So if we add them up, we should get a total of six, 
Again, we look at our reference molecule, our reference shape, and we can see that 6 would lead us to an octahedral shape. So because that leads us to an octahedral shape, uh, I will make this model very quickly, just to show you how it, how it works. So remember our octahedral shape from the first video uh, actually has like a square formation in the middle and then it has two poles, one at the top and one at the bottom. And this is the model that I'm making here. And you can see, so if I was to hold it up, you can see that we've got our square, which is there, or roughly. So you've got one, two, three, four, uh, and then we have two poles, which is the top and the bottom one there. And you can see that's our octahedral, our octahedral shape. Now, this one actually has two lone pairs. And um, what actually happens, um, for these lone pairs to be as far away from each other as they possibly can, you actually lose the bottom one and the top one. So the two poles bonds here, the polar bonds, are actually going to be where your lone pair will sit in this molecule. So if I take that one off from there, and we take that one from the top from there. Now what you have is a lone pair on the top, and a lone pair on the bottom, uh, and because these two lone pairs will actually, well the top lone pair will push these four down, the four that is left behind, and the bottom one will push them back up again, they actually cancel out. And so what you're left with is just something that might look like that, which is a square formation. And you can see this is now a flat molecule, so there's no bits actually sticking out from the top or the bottom of it, uh, and it's a square shape, as you can see. So we call this square planar. Uh, and I'm going to draw the molecule here first. So Xe, and you have two that's going away. So that's a fluorine there and a fluorine there. And we have a wedge that comes towards you, which is an F, and a wedge on that side as well. You have a lone pair on the top and a lone pair on the bottom. So they both equally repel. And you can see, again, from the shape, so if you look on there, you've got two of these bonds that are coming towards you, um, if you can see there, and then you have two that's going away that are just behind these front bonds here. So that's why we've got that particular shape with our lone pairs, top and bottom, and we call that square planar. Uh, square planar. And actually the bond angle between these, like I say, is 90 degrees. So actually in this case, this one hasn't reduced from the original one, again because the electrons are actually cancelling each other out on top and bottom. And that's the exception there, so you do have to be careful with that as well. Um, but that's how you'd work them out um, with lone pairs. Um, there is another video, um, and if you click on the link just below, um, that shows you um, how to deal with shapes of molecules um, when they are ions, um, and ions behave in a, a very similar method to this, except you just have to do one extra step. Uh, but just take a look at the video to find out for yourself. Um, but I hope that helps. That's it. Bye.